So let's do a deep dive into all of this. I'm joined by attorney Glenn McInlay. Thanks for being here, Glenn. You have a lot of experience with RICO. You were the former uh, chief of organized crime up in Boston at the U.S. Attorney's Office. You know this front and back. You've prosecuted a number of these sides, and you've been on the defense here. So I just did a little explanation of RICO, but could you help explain a little bit for our audience what exactly is RICO? Well, RICO is a, um, is a statute that permits wide ranging conduct to be introduced to support and develop the case as you outlined at the, at the beginning. Um, and there are certain elements of, of RICO, uh, including developing evidence of the enterprise, which is essentially an association, in fact, of people with a common purpose. So RICO is, is a tool used by the prosecution to collect large groups of people using evidence that they might otherwise not be admissible um, to implicate them. That's part of the strategy here. And RICO has been used at the federal level and at the state level to go after groups of people. Sometimes that's a mob family. Sometimes that's gangs. You have experience prosecuting these cases. What kind of RICO cases have you brought? Can you tell us a story about one of the RICO charges? You, you have particular experience with gangs, right? Yes, but in the District of Massachusetts, we've also used historically the RICO statute for mobsters. For example, Whitey Bulger was charged with and convicted of RICO. But uh, since that time, we've uh, used the RICO statute for everything from street gangs, local street gangs in Boston, to um, national gangs like the Latin Kings and international gangs such as MS-13. Um, we've bring, brought in the District of Mass the largest Latin King and the largest MS-13 indictments in the country uh, and successfully prosecuted them. Yeah, you talk about the largest cases here in the country. Um, she's looking at 19 co-defendants. Is it typical to see that many people in a RICO case? That seems like a lot of defendants. It's a lot to, to deal with the evidence against each one of the 19 defendants. The, the two cases I mentioned were in excess of 60 defendants um, of both of the gang cases, though, so it, it is not uncommon. Just curious, with the cases with 60 or even fewer than that, how long do those take to go to trial? Because right now we're hearing from Fonnie Willis, you know, she wants to go to trial in six months. That's a lot that's got to happen in six months for 19 defendants. That's not likely because of just the discovery alone of getting the materials from the prosecution as required to the defense counsel of all these uh, 19 individuals will take much longer, in my experience, than the, the spring of 2024. And we've also seen from some of the defendants, including now Mark Meadows and Rudy Giuliani, they're trying to move the case out of state court in Georgia into federal court. Some of that strategy might be the jury pool might be a little bit better for them getting in some of those suburban Atlanta counties. Uh, that may be Trump's strategy. What do you make of that strategy and their likelihood of success here? Yeah, I've never seen a state court criminal prosecution move to federal court. Um, you know, I, I think the prosecutor, Ms. Um, Willis, will likely object to that, given the fact that Matt, the Georgia law is much more um, favorable to the state prosecutor. The RICO statute is much broader. Um, many more predicate acts can be alleged and also you know, there's a, there's a, it can focus on a shorter period of time. The continuity requirement is much less significant in the Georgia statute. What do you think is going to be the key to Trump's defense strategy here? I think Trump needs to fight everything, of course. Um, but, you know, if he truly believed that the election um, was results in Georgia were wrong, then there's no criminal intent of, on the part of President Trump, he's essentially trying to right a wrong rather than manipulate the election to, to seat his, to, to conform to his um, beliefs. So if you had to ballpark it, you're saying no trial in six months and Trump has a, a bit of a long road ahead of him? I would. It's a long road. It's very challenging to defend these cases because not only the multiple types of evidence that are admissible, but also there's multiple defendants in this case, and there's going to be an effort to try to flip them, to testify against them, and, and that would develop evidence of the entire conspiracy and the entire enterprise, Something which would be challenging. Challenging, indeed. Attorney and legal expert, RICO expert, Glenn McKinley, thank you so much for joining us.
Thank you for having me.